Welcome to the Music Journal Podcast, where we talk about the hottest things happening in music right now, and also how you can apply it if you're an aspiring producer or musician yourself. I'm your host, Wes Yi. I'm a producer, artist, and educator, and I'm stoked to be chatting with you. Let's make history. Welcome to another episode of the Music Journal Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. Her name is... Maggie Sajak, and if you follow me on Instagram at west.ye, you might have seen her before. She sings, and she's amazing, and we have a song together called Numb that we made, what, like two years ago, one year ago? Yes, I think it was like a year ago. A year ago? We made it a year ago. Time fucking flies. We must have met like two years ago now, right? Yeah. Damn, where did the time go? Um, She's really amazing. She's got a really unique voice, and if you've heard her, then you know that if you haven't you should definitely check her out our song is called numb it's on spotify but this is our second time in my studio with her behind a mic we just filmed another instagram video so look out for that check it out maggie welcome to the music journal it's good to be here (laughs) yeah for sure i told a really brief synopsis about you kind of like a brief bio do you want to fill in some of the gaps let everybody know about your musical background like how did you start singing um okay so (laughs) i have like no background both my parents were in a band so i like grew up around music um i don't know born born with a voice i guess born to two singers that's how it goes you either get it or you don't interesting so what's interesting to me about your background is that you're not trained right like you've never taken a lesson before yeah i've never taken a music i feel like vocal lessons like it you either have it or you don't and like if you take a vocal lesson like it does help out but like I genuinely think you're born with it. You're born with the voice. That's kind of interesting because, uh, <laughs> to be honest, like, do you think I can sing a mm-hmm, little bit? Mm-hmm, you do? Mm-hmm. When I first started singing, I fucking sucked. <laughs> like, my mom was telling me the other day when I was home, and she has a piano, like the one that I started learning on. Um, I was playing on it, and I was singing, and she came up to me, and she was like, yeah, like, back in the day, back in, like, high school, I never thought you'd be able to sing, which I guess is, like, not really a compliment, <laughs> but... No, That's I what can. she said. No, so I I'm, I'm going to disagree with you, actually. But do you think that you were just born with a voice? Or do you think, like, puberty and shit kind of came and you were able to just No, sing? I mean, like, as a child, like, I would sing around and stuff. My mom would be like, bro, like, you're kind of good. <laughs> like, no me, way. like, a young child, I'm like, thanks. But no, like, definitely, like, I feel like I grew into, like, a rhythm that I, like, you know, funk with and stuff like that. What age did you, I guess, realize that you had this ability to sing? Because you have a lot of nuances, I feel like, like the way you pronounce words and stuff. Maybe yeah. that comes from, I guess, your your background, like your ethnic background, right? Because you're Polish and something else, Yeah, right? I'm Polish and Irish, and like, I definitely have like a little brogue, but like, I think that it comes with like, like, yeah, you really have to like learn your sound, and like, my parents both being um, musicians, like I was like, you know, raised in a, a family with broad music selections, and it was all classic rock and jazz mm. and you know, all this stuff. And then I got into hip hop when I was young and, but I really stuck with jazz. And I think that like the jazz background I had, but like being born and raised in it, I think it helped it out like a lot. I feel that I definitely think that, um, that having a jazz background just kind of helps anybody as a musician. Cause if you really think about it, like all this hip hop stuff and R and B stuff that we listen to these days, it comes from jazz, right? It does, it does. Um, one like, thing you said that I thought was kind of funny is that uh, your mom one day was like, yeah, like, you're really good. But I know tons of kids whose moms were like, yeah, like, you're a really good singer. And I hear them sing, and they are not they, they <laughs> good suck. singers. Like, they some suck. of the worst. No <laughs> yep. offense to any of those people, God but uh, don't quit your day job. But um, but I don't know. What's your take on that? Like, what's your take on... I guess you were kind of kind of blessed with having musical parents, but... Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. What do you? How do you feel about people who are told that they're really good and they're and they're not so good? Do you think that they kind of have a barrier that keeps them from getting kind of good or to a point where they want to be? Um, I think, yeah, I think if you're if you think that you can sing and like you can't, I feel like there's honestly like some type of like tone deaf because tone deaf is like a it's a thing and like when my sister was born they were like she has an hear she has a hearing impairment like she oh, she doesn't have like an issue but she's she's never gonna be able to, to sing because she's tone deaf and like my mom was like well that's crazy because like you know i was i was a kid too like i was a baby too so like they're like well like that's crazy because we're both singers and blah 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 but like one of us was born with tone and one of us was born tone deaf no way so I think that it really, like, I think you are born with it, but there is some, like, elements to, like, going into, like, you know, like, voice lessons and being taught tone and pitch and all that. And I think that 
that's important and like if you're raised in like a like if you can't sing and you're raised in like a like a facility where like people are saying that you can sing I think I think I don't know that maybe they're like not real friends because my friends would be like bro you suck (laughs) (laughs) yeah I think honesty and honest critiques are Mm -hmm. definitely key Mm -hmm. did your did your parents take music lessons I, my dad did not, and he's a phenomenal singer. Oh, no way. My mom is a phenomenal singer, too, but I think she did. She did, I mean, she got taught to, p- to play the guitar and stuff, but then she taught herself after she played for like two weeks, quit the, the guitar lessons, and just taught herself. And I don't think she got vocal lessons, but I'll have to let you know about that. Yeah, keep me posted. I'm definitely on the side that being self taught can be really beneficial to your education because I feel like as somebody who took a lot of lessons on a lot of different instruments, it made it harder for me to be creative, I guess, because I learn all these rules. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to makes like making something, it's all based off of these rules, which are based off of things that have already been made by Mm -hmm. people who didn't know Mm -hmm. any rules. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, And you're a pretty good writer, too. Do you think that do you think that not have having had any musical training has helped your writing at all? My writing, I think, like stems from like just my mental state and like, everybody's a little like corrupt inside but I think like being corrupt is what makes a good writer like I really do like Charles Bukowski and stuff like that I think that him being corrupt and like an alcoholic and all that like makes for his writing and like Mm. not saying I'm an alcoholic but I think that I think that like a little mental default really turns into good writing and like that's what I stem from like numb like we talked about in the beginning is like I stem I like I wrote that from a broken heart and I think that that really like inspired me to like just to feel it like through the music and onto the page yeah i hear that i definitely think some of my best writing has also come from being in kind of lower places but then then again there's a lot of people who uh have really great careers in Mm -hmm. music writing like happy kind of upbeat songs um like i can't even i couldn't even name a sad chance the rapper song oh no so even like even like cocoa butter kisses like he's like it's, it's supposed to be sad but he's like he makes it so upbeat and like happy and he like has a, like a happy ending to like the ending of it. You know I mean? Do you think you could write a song like that if you wanted to? Or do I you could think absolutely it- write a happy song. Like there's a lot of inspiration in my life. I have a lot of good things coming. But I feel like just like some of the songs that I've like put out are like they, they stem from like a little shattered background. Have you have you put out anything other than the mm-hmm. song that we put out? actually i put out like a happy song it was like a love song i was in high school and i dated somebody for three years oh shit and we put together um a song we went to a studio and we put it all together and it was it was good like i'll show it to you after but um yeah it was a happy song it was a love song about him so it was it was good yeah that high school romance yeah the high school romance (laughs) one thing i wanted to cycle back to that i thought you said that was pretty interesting was that your sister who's younger than you right Mm -hmm. how much how much younger she's 18 and you're 21? So, yeah, so three years. Three years, okay. Um, they told her that she would never be able to sing. I feel yeah, like... They did, yeah. I feel like if it's in your gene pool... First mm-hmm. of all, I'm kind of on the side that anybody can sing, but I feel like a lot of tone deafness is people telling you that yeah, you're tone deaf. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that she does, like... she. I mean, there's obviously something like... Like, the, the neurologist, like, said, like, oh, there's something, like, wrong with her, like, hearing and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, like, I feel like if she tried, like, we're all, it's like, I, we come from a family. Like, my mom, my dad, me, all my aunts, all my uncles, we can all sing. We can all play music. And I feel like if she tried, like, she wouldn't be bad, like. Does she have the desire? Um, I haven't seen the desire in her, but I'm sure she, like, you know, sings around and stuff. Like, I'm sure she hasn't, like, pushed it out. She's probably singing in the shower, like super quietly. Like, yeah, she's, want probably, anybody she's to... probably better than me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just whispering in the fucking shower. Um, I think it's really interesting because uh, you know my roommates, yes, Phil, yes. Phil, and then Phil has a uh, a twin brother named Greg. Mm-hmm. But uh, all of us skate, and then Bobby lives here too. Who's course, yeah. Phil? So for the listeners, I guess I have roommates. One's name is Bobby, and he has a younger brother named Phil who has a twin. So it's three guys. And Phil and Greg are twins, which means they have the exact same, like, genetic makeup, I believe. Um, But we all skateboard, and one of them skates regular-footed, which means his left foot is in front, and the other skates goofy-footed, which means his right foot is in front. So I'm kind of like, why are they skating differently? Does that have nothing to do with actual genetics? And then I'm wondering now, is singing uh, something that can be inherited 
by genetics too. I think I genuinely think it does because, like I said before, I never took a singing lesson, and I, not to toot my own horn, but I think I'm pretty good. Like I think I'm decent. Never had taking a singing lesson. Like I just had to find like my sound and my rhythm, and like I adapted to like the jazzy kind of like style, and like you just got to find your sound and like what makes you comfortable because I could sing like. I could say, I don't know. I can't sing like you're a really versatile singer. You're I'm really a good. Very versatile singer, but I also like there's definitely some things that I cannot do, and like mm. you just really need to find your sound, and like you just need to adapt, and like if Ooh. you find a song that doesn't fit your comfort, like you can adapt to it and change it and switch it up a little bit. Yeah, and that's what we do. Totally. Um, this is a this is a controversial opinion, but uh, I'm on the side that Bob Dylan is a not good singer. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? Um. I, I think mean, he's I a think great he's, writer. He's I think a phenomenal he's a writer. Singer. Oh my god, I think that he's like a he's a good singer. Like he has it. I think it's one of those things where he found a sound that worked for him. Like people say, even like Bonnie Vare, who I fucking love, doesn't have good vocal technique. But the thing is, he was able to mm-hmm. find a sound. So I, I guess I agree with you in yeah, that I sense. Think, I think when you find a sound and you adapt to it, and like like Bob Dylan and Bonnie Vare, like you can't. Like once you're doing it for years on years on years on like decades, it's hard to jump out of that and it's hard to like step out of your comfort zone. Mm. But what do you what's your take on somebody who is really good at a certain style of music but maybe like fucking hates it? Like well, there's a <laughs> there's a there's a fucking cellist. I can't remember his name, but he was yeah. a professional cellist and he had a really long career as a professional cellist for a really <laughs> long time. And he was in all the magazines and shit, and he right. was like world renowned. And uh, at one point, when he was like getting ready to retire, he broke his arm, and they they were like, "Holy shit! Like, what are you gonna do? Like, how do you feel about right. the fact that you can never play cello again?" And he said, "Honestly, I'm thankful I never have to play this <laughs> fucking instrument ever again." Yeah. Um, because like maybe he wanted to play something that wasn't the cello, and maybe in a different style, but. He found that he was really good at cello, so I think you're really lucky in the in the sense that you really like jazz and you really like right. that like Amy Winehouse sound. Yeah, but what if I, what keep going? Well, what if what if you did like something that wasn't in that realm? Like, what if that was something that you wanted to really pursue, but it wasn't it wasn't what you were naturally good at? See, I think that's like really interesting because I think there are a lot of like I I mean I was I was raised like I mean my dad listens to jazz music and I like would drive in the car with him like um listening to jazz music and all this and um I think that it's really interesting because like I never like grew up thinking oh I'm gonna be a jazz singer and I'm gonna fucking you know I'm gonna have all this raspiness in my voice and all that but it's like I mean like I I, my prime music is hip-hop and like R&B and stuff like that but like if you put like a hip hop beat in front of me and like an R and beat beat in front of me, like I don't think I could like funk to it as well as I can funk to jazz. But like, mm. I think that like, you know, once you hit like I don't hate jazz like like the person that you were talking about hates the cello so much. Yeah, but it's definitely like it's like I don't listen to jazz every single day. I don't I don't like it's not my primary taste of music, but I can sing it very well. And like whenever people come up to me and say, "Oh, like what kind of music do you play?" I'm like, "Well, I play jazz music." but I listen to hip hop and I listen to classic rock and you know what I mean? Like I have a very versatile taste in music, but I can, I can like strictly sing jazz music. Yeah. Yeah. And then you incorporate those elements too. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you, and it's lucky too, because jazz and hip hop are so intertwined, you know what I mean? So I guess if, if you wanted to be like a fucking like, metal singer or something <laughs> that's definitely i that's, can't do that, well i think if if you had some like training i think that's where the vocal training would come oh yeah into play but i think that uh you've been really fortunate that everything just kind of like aligned and you've been yeah like i think that so if somebody said it. like hey you're really good at screamo music you know what i mean <laughs> i'd be like well i feel like i fucking hate that kind of music Mag, you're really good at screamo music <laughs> yeah like, i'd be like well i hate this type of music but if i'm good at it and it makes me get somewhere and it makes me get like the hype and like the fans and the like, crowd base and stuff like that then obviously i'm gonna do it but i fucking hate the sound mm. but if i'm good at it like of course i'm gonna do, like you know what i mean like it's like i don't even know like i'm good at school but like i'm not like a oh, fan of going to school like it's kind of like that like i have you know i have a very high gpa like i have 
good limitations on like my education but like i obviously don't like going to school like i don't like going into class every single day you know some what people I mean? do some people love that shit some people do but i am not one of them i mean i think I, I don't get me wrong like i'm not taking my education for granted like i'm blessed that i have this opportunity and stuff but if i had the chance to just like have the degree without going to class 100 percent, like 100 yeah. percent, like save the money too absolutely um i gotta i gotta ask i'm so curious so uh you've had a lot of like positive attributes to your music career i guess and like your ability to sing have you ever uh had a moment i guess where you felt like oh like i suck or like had like a time where you bombed on stage or anything yeah so when i was in high school with the um my high school sweetheart if you want to call him we used to make music all the time and we we do shows at like the middle east and cambridge and there were times where like we'd just be on stage and like i'd be like fuck dude like i just don't feel it like i just don't feel it like and i think that like on top of like, I feel like once you're in like a setting where you're with like a group of people that are playing music with you and it's like, if you don't feel, if you don't feel connected in that group mm. and like, you're just not feeling it that day, like everybody's playing off and I, like I'm singing off, like it has, it's like a group, um, what is it? It's a vibe that comes with It is the- a vibe. Yeah. And like, I feel like if you're just not vibing well that day, it's like, I just can't do it. And it's like times like, like that suck because you're on stage in front of a sold out room yeah. and you're like, I'm just not feeling it. Like <laughs> I, I sound like shit. Everybody else sounds like shit. Like, I mean, maybe they didn't, but to me in my ears, like I'm like, you know what? We're just not vibing well today. Like, you know what I mean? Like it the happens. guitar's off, the drums are off, the bass is off. Like I'm off. And We're like human. that sucks. Like it really is a team thing like what do you what do you do in that situation though like what do you recommend to someone because everybody faces it you know oh, what, I mean? like, what do you i would think like if, if you're on stage and you're not feeling it and you're like we're not vibing well right now honestly fuck it if you're on stage you need to have like a little powwow i don't even give a <laughs> fuck if it's on stage be like yo we're not vibing well like we need to like get this like you need to be on rhythm you need to be on beat i need to be vocally like more enhanced in this moment like like have a quick second like just discuss it like talk about it and like communication is key communication is key in music it's in relationships it's in life like oh shit, yeah. communication is key definitely um i've definitely we, we jam a lot um and i've definitely felt in certain instances where like maybe we've been at your place or something yeah and we're playing and there's like a group of people i've never met before mm, i definitely have mm. felt like oh shit like this is like Awkward. A little bit strange of a situation, and I'm not really feeling like I know what situation my, you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> on top of my game, right? Um, but yeah, it is kind of just about like pulling it together. And I think it you're is. right that the whole because it's like all eyes on us, and it's like we're the only like two, three people jamming, and it's like if they're not vibing, that's also a thing. Like crowd base and fan base is a huge thing, and if the crowd isn't vibing to what you're doing, it like kind of puts it on you, and you're like. Yeah. You're like shit like they're not they're, they don't like what i'm doing right now and it's like i need to switch it up to like something that they're used to something that they like something that they're gonna funk with mm. like on the ground like as i'm upstage you know what i mean yeah that's real um i dj too and they talk about that all the time like if you're if you're spinning records um i'd say like 40 to 50 percent of the job isn't even doing like the mix it's looking Facts. at the crowd seeing what they're dancing to seeing what they're vibing to and then at the same time it if is. you're an audience member in a crowd um, if, if you're just there by yourself listening to a band mm. and you're not really feeling it, that's a bad show. You know what I mean? Even if know, the music is good, mm-hmm. but if you have a big crowd surrounding you, it's about the whole experience. Is, so yeah. I think that everybody vibing and having a good time will make you have a good time. And then the band has a better time because they see everybody else having a yeah. good time. And it's just like law of attraction. And that's a huge thing for me. Cause it's like, I love old school hip hop. Like I don't like modern day, like mumble rap hip hop. I like old school hip hop, like souls of mischief, like limp biscuit like stuff like that Word, yeah and it's like that's my inspiration in jazz who listens to old school hip-hop and jazz music right now so it's like if you're like if that is your vibe and like that's your tone it's like hard to get like an audience to connect so you have to like you have to really get that rhythm with like the modern day mixed with what you're into and it's like it's a science really because you're mm-hmm. like trying to like vibe with both things going on and um jamie fox does like a really good job of that because he keeps up with like what everybody's into yeah. like back in the day he funked with like old school and like now he's doing like this pop like this pop rap like type thing and he like he's just like really vibing with what everybody else is vibing to and it's like a dope it's thing key. yeah definitely i agree like, with he that. really has like modern day on the clutch like yeah he's killing it um i usually ask guests on this show to tell a, a like a crazy story from either like performing <laughs> or touring or something if you want to share the story from 
numb uh because I, I made the how do we do that again i made the beat here mm-hmm. i think solo mm-hmm. and i maybe wrote a verse or something i think yeah. and then did i send you that yeah did i send you the verse and the beat is that how that happened yes yeah, so you originally had sent me the beat and i was like yo i really like this beat and then you had sent me a verse and i'm like all right let me write something so i wrote like i wrote like a page or two on it like i had lyrics on lyrics but it, like i said before it all stemmed from a broken heart so that was my motivation was like i got hurt and I'm going to just, like, write on it. Like, you know what I mean? What was the process of writing it for you, though? Like, the process, like, Do you the turn the lights off and shit? Do you, no, like, I don't turn the lights Like, once I, f- like, I really, really need to connect to that beat. So once I had that beat, I immediately connected to it. And, like, once I, I was hearing it over and over and over, like, replaying it over and over and over and really writing to that. And, like, like I said in the song, I was like, Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain is in the lyrics. And, like, those are my inspirations, like, the whole 27 Club. Mm. And, like, that, I had to put it in there because I'm like, they really inspire my music and like they really like heal a broken heart for me yeah okay. so like the whole song for me is about being hurt and stuff like that and it's i say like there's not enough Jimi hendrix stuck inside my bones there's not enough you know kurt cobain like i don't even know but i was like there's you know there's just they died so young there's not enough of them like to heal my broken heart mm. like there's not enough music put out Ma. and i think like for me i was just really connecting to like old artists and stuff and i was really connecting to the beat and like the broken heart and all that and that is how I came up with the verse for that. Did you do uh, the lyrics or the melody first? Um, I probably put the melody first so I could hear oh, it, like, really? you know, like the, like just so I could know like what my lyrics needed to sound like. And I came, I remember coming here with a bunch of lyrics and we were like testing them all out. I remember like the lyrics that I put into the final cut of the song weren't even in line with what I wrote. But oh, we, really? we chopped and screwed. Yeah, we chopped and screwed with all the lyrics that I wrote and you're like, yo, I fuck with this, I fuck with that. I'm like, all right, let's fucking, you know, let's put it in order like how you like it, how I like it. Mm. And the end cut was good. Like That's, yeah, that's the magic of making music. I, mm. uh, I recently had this dude, Kyle Crosby English, on the show and he was one of Token's producers. Right. He produced uh, Patty Cake and, and a couple other of his mm-hmm. tracks. And he talks about how, um, and, and I, we really resonated on this one. We related hard on it. But uh, I think with Numb, I even started with like a totally different keys part. And then I did the drums to it. Right. And then when I put the drums on it, I was like, I don't really like these keys anymore. Yeah. So I took the drums and then I just looped the drums and then I played a new keys riff over it. Yeah, and I was like, okay, this it. one worked. Uh, and that's the whole crazy thing about it too, is that it's just like a lot of mixing and matching, right? Hey, we'll be back in the episode in just two seconds, but before that, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. So for all you aspiring producers and artists out there, I can't even begin to tell you how important having a mentor was to me. I would literally not be where I am today if it wasn't for people like Mike Moss, who is a three-time Grammy Award nominee. He got me my first credit, and Prince Charles Alexander, who's recorded Biggie and Alicia Keys. I wouldn't have been able to continue to grow and progress in my craft if it wasn't for them. So if you've been listening to the show and you heard episode 19 with Cato on the track, you know he's produced for B.O.B., Joyner Lucas, Hopson. He got token viral with his contest before anybody even knew who he was, and he totally blew up. The reason I'm telling you this is because he just opened up a mentorship program that will transition your music from being a side hustle to a career. If you want to learn the secrets from people at the top of the industry, go to bit.ly slash tmjmentor and you can try it for free. That's bit.ly slash tmjmentor. Yeah, and I think like with your music specifically, like there's a lot of versatility in it. Thanks. And I think like Numb was just like completely different from like all the, th- the all the things that you had like put out before that mm, so I like so. when i heard it i'm like wow i really really like this and like you know it's it had like a more jazzy like piano-esque type and i think that like i don't know i think it really fit well like you like you were like all right spit a verse on this i was like this like you're this is like i'm like probably the best person to ask for this because <laughs> i have like a jazzy background but no i think like your music is very versatile so like all the songs that you put out on all the things that you have on like itunes and soundcloud and it's like spotify and stuff like that it's like it all sounds like different and like that's what i like about your music that's why i funk with you that's why i jam with you and stuff yeah yeah appreciate that um it's like you said it just comes from every day because every day is different like i remember when i wrote that verse i had a dream about my ex i had a fucking sex dream (laughs) about my ex yeah you told me that you told me that i had a fucking sex dream about my ex that's where my motivation stemmed from like that was that sucked 
Um, All right. What's what's the story behind yours? So that's that's what I okay. So I was behind my so my, me like I had just been with a guy from for two years and I thought like I was like I love him like love my life whatever whatever and then like we broke up and blah blah it had been months and months and it really did like a total on my like mental state and so like I think even before you sent me like your verse I heard the song and I was like I'm just gonna write about him because that's my motivation right now like that is what's like right. it's on my it's, it's on so my head like to, yeah. day after day after day after day and like it really fucking hurt every single day and I was like why not write it on paper instead of dwelling and like keeping mm. it all congested in my head and I think that's also like a form of therapy it's like totally and even when you go to therapy and like if you go to therapy or like group session therapy, they tell you to write out like how you're feeling. And that is how I was feeling like in that time. It is crazy. There is something about having an emotion and then and then putting it out there like something that's tangible that it's you can a, hold yeah, and actually read. And it's a lot different than having it, I guess, in your in your right. mind. Um, I couldn't tell you what it is about it. I was talking to uh, I was talking to someone about this this morning. Cause, uh, she was telling me that like when she gets, when she gets angry, like it's, it's from like an accumulation of things. Like right. maybe one yeah, of her roommates will up. do like, yeah, we'll do like something small. So it's like, okay, right. like, brush yes. that off. Not a yes. big deal. Then another small thing and then another small thing and another small thing. And then finally one more boom. small thing, boom, over the fucking edge over and the then just edge. lashes out. But what's crazy is if you do that, you look like the crazy person because from you their do. perspective, you're you like, just, why are you yelling at me yeah, over like spilled milk? Over like, but it's not crazy because it's 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 over in your head all that and it's other things. Up, yeah. So yeah, I think that's real. I think it's important for anybody no, it's definitely important listening to yeah take up like fucking poetry or oh poetry is like I started writing poetry before I started writing music. I think they're one and the same. They are hundred percent one and the same because you take any any like famous like really like if you could take Kurt Cobain's lyrics, you Jimi Hendrix lyrics, Amy Winehouse. Janis Joplin, like Jim Morrison, any of theirs, and you strip it and you just listen to their words. It's like they were really like putting their heart and soul and like yeah. bodies out onto this piece of paper. And it's like, you know, wh- why go to a therapy session when I can just literally put it all out on paper, grab right. a beat and make it into something beautiful? Yeah, yeah. Why and tell a stranger and pay $100 an hour or whatever when you could just write it down for free? Because, yeah. Cause, and make yeah. something dope. Mm-hmm. Um, we're unfortunately kind of close to our time. Let's uh, do it. there's one question I ask at the end of every episode. Uh, I'm curious what your answer to it is. Cause I don't think I've asked you before, but if you had unlimited money, no strings attached, what would you do and why? Oh, that's, that's crazy. If I had unlimited money, first of all, I want like, obviously I'd like live bougie, ew, but no, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, if I had unlimited money, I would absolutely... Like, I have close things to heart. Like, I would want to put, like, one thing that I've been, like, every time every, anybody asks me that, I say I want to put all of my money towards, like, an Alzheimer cure. And, like, oh, shit. Yeah, because it's, clo- it's very, very close to heart. My grandpa, like, my best friend growing up, like, he, like, when I, I was homeless, he saved my life. He put me into a household. When were you homeless? I was homeless at the ages of five to 14. And we were jumping everywhere, like cars, houses, places really? like that. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. So he put me into a house. He gave me a shelter. He gave me a home. He gave me love. He gave me all that. Like, And my parents were going through a really hard time at the time. So they were like aggressive and like very distant and blah, blah, blah. So I really like connected to him and like I leached onto him kind of. And like then... You know, his downfall was Alzheimer's and then he got sick and sick and sick and that Fuck. was the worst. But I would 100% put all my money towards all, like an Alzheimer cure because, you know. Is he I, still alive? No, no, he oh, passed. Shit. He passed. Sorry to hear yeah, that. thank you. But yeah, I would absolutely put it towards that because I don't, I don't, I would never want anybody else to go through because it sucks. Alzheimer's sucks. Yeah. It does. No kidding. No What's, kidding. I want to go a little bit longer, actually. I'm going to make an executive decision. This is my show, so I get to kind of call the shots. Yeah, it's your show. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, is, what is Alzheimer's? Like, I know a little bit about it. Like, you forget things, mm, right? And you forget, yeah. like, who people are. And you're, like, yeah, even, so like, with, with him, I'll speak on my personal experience. With, with him, we were, best, like, best friends. Best friends. Very, very, very connected. And with him, it was, like, all right, so he, like, my parents, like, my, like all my whole entire family knew that he was very, like, we were very, very close and we were like, you know, like heart and heart, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So when he got like Alzheimer's, it would be very slight things. Like he'd be like, oh, like, where did I put my glass of water? And I'm like, (coughs) oh, it's like, it's on the couch over there or it's on the counter over there. 
I was like, okay, thanks. Didn't get up to get it. Ten, like five minutes later, oh, like where's my cup of water? It was like slight things like that. Like, oh, mm-hmm. where's this? Where's that? I'm like, I just told you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it, got, it just got fucking worse and worse. And like sometimes it's not as bad as the case that I had with my like grandfather. But with some people, it's very progressive. But with mine, it was just immediate. It was like immediate. And like, I don't know, if maybe five months later, I walked into his, he got put into a nursing home initially. And I walked into the nursing home and, and he was like, oh, who's this? And fucking, I can't even explain to you how I felt. I'm like, what do you mean, who's this? Like, oh, shit. Who, like, what do you mean, who am I? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, oh, who's this? Like, she's beautiful. Who's this? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you can't take it personally, though, because you know it's no, not you, him. You it's... genuinely can't. And like, that was my best friend. That was my ride or die. And so him saying that, I was like, damn, like, it, like he really fucking has it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it just sucks. Like, the way I put it, like, you forget little things. Like, if first you forget little things, then you forget people. Then it gets to the point, if it's bad enough, you just, you forget how to fucking talk. At the, at the end, didn't know how to talk, did not have, barely knew how to move, couldn't feed himself. Fuck just because he did not remember how to do it. I would rather just fucking pull the plug right yeah. there, to be honest. And, like, and, and then he got, like, he got, like, pneumonia. And then, like, he, well, he had cancer on top of that. So he had cancer and then pneumonia is what, like, put him down. Jesus. Was this your, was this your... Dad's it was my dad mother's or? it was my mother's father okay and we were fucking oh my god we were best friends and i remember at the funeral people were like oh who is that who was that? Like, that was his closest like that was his closest so, like people saying like that's his closest like they were like a seed you know like a seed in hand yeah totally Shit fucking sucks fuck well, i'm sorry to hear that thank you we should do a song about that or something oh i've yeah, i've written i'll show you after all i've Okay. I've written songs on it, yeah. yeah, yeah. What? Where does that fit into the timeline of, I guess, like the homelessness and everything? Because I mean, you said five to fourteen, right? Yeah, I was homeless for a while. Okay, I actually wasn't expecting to say that. I was expecting to say like sixteen to like nineteen, because I met you yeah. when you were twenty-ish. Mm-hmm. I think like two yes. years ago. Yes. Um. So I don't really know anything about like your your timeline. I know it's crazy. Um, yeah. So saying- five to fourteen, like he, I was homeless, and like my papa was like a big part in it. Because like he had given me the home and he had given me the shelter, but like it wasn't our house and all this, and we were just kind of like, in a, in a sense, squatting. Mm. But yeah, so then when I was sixteen, I moved. I was like, I moved out. I moved into friends' house. So when I, oh, like, I from sixteen, that. I've been on my own. I'm twenty one. I've been on my own since sixteen. I've no been shit. In oh, Boston. I didn't know that. Yeah. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's crazy. When you're when you're that young, I mean, when you're five, you don't you don't know what's going on, Mm-mm. right? Correct me if I'm wrong. At no. what point? Did you, I guess, realize like, okay, this is like kind of fucked up. I got to I there gotta was go a point. and like do this on my own. And yeah, no, there was out. a direct point. I was like, I want to say in the ranges. I don't remember the exact age, but I was like 11 to maybe like 13 in those ages. And do I you remember, have like friends who you like talk to and they were like, hey, like come to my house or whatever. And no, at the time, like I was just like wherever my mom and my parent, like my dad. So when I initially first went homeless, my mom, I went with my mom and my dad stayed in like this house that we were living at before, but it was, it was essentially a crack house. So we were, my mom was like, I'm not living here. So we moved out and I was like, just going wherever they were. And then when my my dad joined us, we were just, I was just going, you know, where the wind flow, like, Shit. you know what I mean? But there was a point where I was, my, my mom, I was like 11 years old. My sister was like, I don't know, nine. Like nine yeah. Right. And my, nine. my dad, I mean, my mom was like, Hey, just take your sister like wherever blah blah so we had to walk like all over town and and, like do whatever like because we couldn't be in the house because they were going to like court to like get ownership of this house that we had been like essentially squatting at the whole entire time and then finally we got ownership of it when i was 14 damn that's crazy. yeah so i think like a lot of that stems to like my motivation and like writing and music and all that stuff yeah because it's like were you singing a lot like during this no i mean i was like young and i like i loved music i've never not loved music but Mm. like yeah i wrote a lot and like i would write like essays for classes and they'd be like wow you're like a really good writer and i'm like okay whatever you know (laughs) fuck you like fuck this but that's a compliment yeah definitely that's fucking wild um i want to end with a happy ending can you just let everybody know like what you're doing now maybe where they can find you yeah now oh my god i 360'd my life dude fucking going through that shit like makes you just like it made made me tough it made me like it like it made me ballsy so i was like dude fuck it like i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm gonna. I have street smarts on top, on like on deck, on deck, on deck. So I was like, "Fuck it!" Like I'm just gonna roll with the streets. But then I was like, "Why roll with the streets when I can, you know, be on top of the streets?" So I enrolled in college, criminal justice major. Actually, I'm an officer for Homeland Security now, 
And I just don't see myself not moving up until I'm at the fucking top, bro. Like, I'm ahead of the game. Like, all of my coworkers are, like, 30-plus, and I'm 21 years old. Fucking badass. Where do you see yourself musically in the next, like, Musically, I die. If if a music, you know, opportunity comes to play, 100% I'm going to take it. 100%. Like, I mean, I love what I do now career-wise. I love Homeland Security. I love policing. But if music takes, you know, its hand in mine... 100% 100% I'm going to take it. Amazing. Well, yo, Maggie, thank you so much for being thank on Thank you the for podcast. having me. Thank you. All right. So that's going to conclude the interview portion of today's podcast. This next part is slowly but surely becoming my favorite part of the show. And it's where I take all of your submissions and your music and I actually get to feature it on my show for everybody else who is listening. And it's a really cool way for me to kind of give back to the community give some really talented artists and producers some exposure and also an opportunity for you guys at home listening to hear some cool music. So I guess before I play the song, um, first of all, I want to, want to wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. If you're in the States and you celebrate it, hope it went well. To be totally honest, I did not get a chance to go through all the submissions from this week for that reason, because I was doing family stuff and all sorts of other holiday stuff. So I actually picked the runner-up from last week. But that does not mean your submission went to waste because if you sent me a song for this week, it's going to be considered for next week's submissions. So it definitely did not go to waste. And uh, I look forward to listening to all of them and potentially featuring you on the next podcast. So if you don't know, you can submit your song to Wes at homestudiohits.com. That's W-E-S at H-O-M-E-S-T-U-D-I-O-H-I-T-S dot com. And I listen to all of them. Please only submit one song. Otherwise, it will be disqualified for that week. And I look forward to hearing what you send. So the song I picked for this week, it's called No More Fake Love. And it's by an artist named Gift. It was sent to me by somebody named Jeremiah Porter. Um, I'm not sure what his role is i think he's the artist because he said here's a link to my single but the project is called 98th and heartbreak it has a feature named stony p and it was produced by somebody who goes by the name of euros beats and what really stood out to me about this song was how hard the 808s hit they're really clean sounding but at the same time they still bang they even cut through my laptop speakers really nicely so i definitely wanted to showcase that and, uh, and the song is very emotional and heartfelt as well, so sit back and enjoy it. So there you have it. That's a little snippet of this song. If you enjoyed it, go check them out. Show them some love. It's by Gift on SoundCloud. That's Gift G exclamation point. FT, the song is called No More Fake Love featuring Stony P. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Music Journal. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got a lot out of it. If you want to know more about me and what I do, I just put out a personal EP on Spotify. You can go to bit.ly slash Spotify. And if you want to know more about music production, I teach an online course about it too. Just shoot an email to wes at homestudiohits.com and I'll send you an application. Just for filling out the application, I'll send you a free sample pack of sounds I use to make the instrumental you're listening to and more. All these links will be available in the show notes so you can check them out there. And while you're there, if you feel inclined to rate this show five stars, that would really help me out. Other than that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Thanks again. Peace.